Hey everyone, welcome back. So I read an article just a few days ago that how ABML is just one step away from hitting a jackpot. Now that's a huge news for a company that has not yet produced anything or not yet had started operation. So that prompted me to do more research on the company, find out few things that it's doing, and in my findings, I realized that you know what, ABML has actually hit few jackpots already, and few of them are just around the corner. So in this research, I'm gonna break it down all of those things that I found and how exciting time it is for a company like ABML and where do we see the future of ABML from this point onwards. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna share the research, but I warn you, please watch the video till the end because I'm gonna show you some facts which are damn exciting for this company and also for the whole EV world. And if you get anything out of the video, of course, after watching the video till the end, then do me a favor, give me that thumbs up share, subscribe, and like this video so this video can go out to more ABML lovers. Here's my screen. So before I jump into the topic that I discussed about how ABML is just one step away from hitting the jackpot, I'm gonna touch base on another article that I saw online. So Electric reported that Canada is going to ban new gas-powered car sales by 2035. Now we know that China has already announced, we know that in US some of the states have already announced, but Canada as a whole country is going to ban gas-powered car sales by 2035. This is big news. And of course, why US has not announced this? Because US, as we know, is lagging behind than China and they are trying to catch up to China on EV manufacturing, EV sales, EV subsidies. So why has US not come out and said, you know what, we are going to ban gas-powered cars by 2030 or 2035? Few states have done it, but not the entire country. So in my opinion, one of the main reasons why US has not stepped forward in this direction is because of the legacy automakers. And if they come out and announce, and if these companies are not able to scale as quickly as US wants them, then it's gonna be a huge problem. That is why I think US is waiting for these companies to ramp up their EV manufacturing, ramp up their EV sales, and that's when they will announce that they are going to ban EV or gas-powered car sales by this year. Regardless, this is a very exciting time for all EV manufacturers, all battery manufacturers, and of course, all battery recycle companies. Okay, so now let's talk about jackpot. So this article came where it says American battery ABML is one step away from hitting jackpot. So in this article, they are talking about that the Fernley City Council for a conditional use permit for future lithium ion recycling plant. This latest approval takes the company one step closer to permitting and building a first of its kind experimental lithium ion battery recycling plant in Fernley, Nevada. So that's the article or that's the, the topic that this article is talking about that why they are one step closer to hitting a jackpot. Now, if you go to ABML site, this company provides their services in three forms. First, recycling. So basically they take the existing lithium ion batteries, takes the minerals out, takes the batteries out, and recycles them. The second process is extraction, where they take out battery-grade lithium products from brine, clay, stone, hard rock, and other resources. And the third process is resource production. That is why they are setting up their factory in Nevada. That's why Tesla went to Nevada, because Nevada is a very resource-rich state for, for products like lithium. So these are the three services that ABML currently provides to its customers. Okay, now let's talk about Ryan Meltzer, their CTO and the former Tesla employees that kind of brought this company into the limelight. So Ryan Meltzer currently holds three patents on lithium ion recycling or battery recycling. All the three patents belongs to Tesla. That means that Ryan cannot use these patents directly on ABML. He has to make some changes into the current process in order to bring these patents over to ABML and start using it. And that is why Ryan Meltzer is working in their Cambridge office to basically change these patents a little bit to bring them over to ABML and start using it for the actual production and manufacturing. Okay, now let's talk about the jackpot. So in my opinion, there are a few other things where ABML has already won the jackpot and also are in the process of winning more jackpots. That one article that you said, that was just one piece of puzzle. One of the biggest things that I see is that this article right here, so ABML Battery Metal Corporation congratulate Nobel Prize winners for creation of lithium ion battery and new battery. This article was posted on October 20, 2019. And from that article, I started to do more research about what does it mean, why ABML is congratulating these three Nobel Prize winners for their development and their contribution in lithium ion batteries. 
That led me to this person, which is Stanley Whittingham. And of course, full credit to the Reddit people and Reddit users who posted this, that huge news, Melsert working with 2019 Nobel Prize winner Stanley. And I found this article on Reddit. Then from Reddit, this is the article right from Reddit. So full credit to this person, uh, Benjamin Laser, right here, who posted a month ago how Ryan Melsert is actually working with the Nobel Prize winner. Then from there, I got to this YouTube video in the channel, which is Battery Save the Future. Again, full credit to them. And in this video, Ryan Melsert from ABML actually mentions how they are working with Stanley Whittingham, who is basically a Nobel Prize winner for the lithium ion battery. So in my opinion, that's a huge deal. The person who actually developed a lithium ion battery or who contributed to the development of lithium ion battery is actually working with ABML in recycling. Who else knows battery better than this person and or the group of the person, those who developed it or those who contributed in the development of the lithium ion battery. So I think this is one of the big jackpots. Again, full credit to the Reddit user, full credit to the YouTube channel who posted the video that kind of confirmed that ABML is working with Stanley Whittingham on this project. Again, I have not found this information on ABML's website, so take it for what it's worth. But I have a strong feeling that yes, it's happening because Ryan Melsert mentioned it in the video towards the end. If you watch that video, I can give that link in the description of how ABML is working with Stanley Whittingham on their lithium ion recycling development and their technology. Very exciting stuff. The second jackpot, in my opinion, is this news right here, how American Battery has won the challenge and are now working with BASF for the battery recycling. This is huge because BASF is one of the biggest company in the industry. Okay, now let's talk about the third jackpot, which in my opinion is pretty massive. So right here in the news, one of the article that came out, it says right here, and I'm gonna point this over here. The advantage of ABML process is that there is no two year wait to obtain the lithium as a common with conventional evaporation ponds used in South American projects. There is no ruining the ground with multiple football field size ponds cutting into earth. In fact, once lithium comes out of the well, ABML can be producing it within eight hours into a scalable product that can directly go into supply chain. This is massive technology. This is huge. And that is why, in my opinion, I feel that Stanley Whittingham, BASF have agreed to partner with ABML. So news like this is really exciting. But there is a bigger picture here, okay? And that's right here. So in a recent interview, Doug Cole, which is CEO of ABML, mentioned this, that Tesla Nevada is one of the biggest building in the world. And you can see it right here. The current structure has a footprint of more than 1. million square feet, which houses approximately 5.3 million square feet of operational space across several floors. Still, the Gigafactory is about 30% done. Once complete, Tesla expects Gigafactory to be the biggest building in the world. Now, Doug Cole mentions it, that how Tesla Nevada is one of the biggest building in the world. So here's some other fact for you. 200 more of these buildings are being built and will be operational in the next eight years. So we know that Tesla Nevada right now is one of the biggest building in the world. 200 more of these buildings are being built right now and they will be operational in the next eight years. 65% of those will be in China. That's a massive problem. See, US is already scared of China domination because we know how important batteries are for the whole EV revolution. If there are 200 more of those buildings being built, 65% of those will be in China. We have a huge problem in our hand. So as we know, huge problem equals huge opportunity. And this is so true in this case. I feel ABML as being so undervalued, of course, because they are not producing anything. They're, they have not proved anything yet. But I feel this company is going to be a huge success in the next few years. Now, as investors, what are we supposed to do? So other than investing, of course, and I said investors, I didn't call traders. There's a huge difference. This company is not for someone who wants to come in today and cash out tomorrow because you're gonna end up losing your money. This company is a long-term investment. So now let's look at the stock as a whole and where I see the pattern. So as we know that at one point stock hit like 4.9 uh, as, as high as 4.9 and since then it's been coming down. Then as we see there was a run up and it came down, there's another run up and it came down. So it's forming a pattern and from what I see right now it's a huge opportunity for us investors to get into the company if you're not already on it. For those who got in here, congratulations, you will make some serious money. For those who got here, congratulations, you are already up. For those who are not in yet, congratulations, because this stock is giving you another opportunity 
to come in and, and start investing in this company. Anything under two, wow, it's a jump. It's a jump in my opinion. Again, I'm not saying the stock is not gonna go down to 150 or 160, sure. I mean, the stock market is, is all emotional. So any bad news, you can see stocks like these companies, people taking profit. But again, that in my opinion would be another opportunity to buy more of ABML. Now let's look at what analysts are saying. So there are not many analysts covering this, of course, because the company is not producing, so analysts doesn't want to waste their time in covering it. But one of the analysts that I found on TipRank who's covering it, they mentioned that in the next 12 months, the stock can go up to $3.50. So if you see where the stock is right now, that's almost double, almost double, right? Close to double. So I feel it doesn't matter if the company is a dollar right now, a dollar fifty or two dollars, you are going to make money just in the next 12 months. Forget about five years. I'm not talking about next five years. I'm talking about in the next 12 months, you're going to make your money back and more. Okay, now as an investor, I do have some suggestions and I do have some recommendation and I need your input and your support to basically put in the comments below because I'm sure this company is so new that any kind of media that they get, their people are checking. If not, they should be checking. So in my opinion, these are the few things that I feel the company should do. Again, my opinion only. And if you agree with me, please put it in the comments. Give us some dates. Give us some dates approximate. I'm not saying that put it in the calendar saying that we are going to start producing by next September or by next June. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is that give us a date because as investors and as industry people, those who are heavily invested in EV industry, we want to know because again, this directly reflects on our other EV investment, not just ABML. I'm talking about our investments in Tesla, our investments in CCIV. We want to know what are you doing and what is a start of production and when do you see yourself to be operational? I think it's very important for us investors to know that when are they planning? The company is bleeding money right now, of course, because they are a new company. They're spending so much money in research and development. They need to come out and give us some dates. That's number one request to them. Number two, and I'm, I think I'm gonna write it here. So number one is give us some dates, okay? Number two, showcase collaboration. So if you're working with, with Stanley Whittingham, if you're working with, with other industry leaders or industry pioneers, put it on your website. Let the investors know that you are doing a great job with that and we want to know and we will support because again, this is an important company for this transformation. So we want to support and we want to know. So showcase on your website, let's not uh, us find on YouTube, on a different channel that you know this is what you're doing. Why keep it a secret? If the world already knows, just be proud of, of what of the collaboration that you're doing. Number three, in my opinion, is have more social media presence for better talent acquisition. See how Palantir is doing. They created their own channel. They are producing these videos, which is so cool to look at. Why? Because people doesn't understand their business. They want smart people to come and work. When somebody is watching this video and they are in that industry, it might cross their mind, you know what, this looks like a really cool project. I should go and work for them. See, battery recycling is pretty boring. You and I are not going to spend our hours and hours of time watching those videos. So they need to have a better social media presence, in my opinion, and make it look cool make it look inviting because in my opinion that's the only way they are going to attract good talent my opinion only i'm in the industry as well not in of course battery recycling industry but i have a business as well so for me when i have to acquire a talent or someone good i of course say so many things about my company which i don't talk about on a daily basis because i want that person to know that how good we are and how cool we are that's the same approach in my opinion that they should take in in, in having a better social media presence third thing and this is completely my opinion. Change the logo. <laughs> I mean, have you seen the logo? I can't make sense of it. If any of you know what the logo means, please uh, write down because I'm looking at it. And I'm like, what is this? I mean, of course, it means something to them in their industry. I'm not from that industry. I'm just an investor in the company. Uh, but I feel like they need to have a cool looking logo. Look at Palantir's logo, right? Look at Tesla's logo. Look at Apple's logo. Like they need to have like short, sweet and boom, that kind of a logo. So please, if you're listening, ABML, if you're listening and, and people, uh, who, those who are watching this video, if you agree with me, please go ahead and comment in the section that I think they should change their logo. Again, it's my opinion only. All right, so that's what I feel that the real jackpot is for the company and they are sitting at such a sweet spot right now. So if you get anything out of the video, do me a favor, hit that share, subscribe and like button and help this video reach out to more ABML lovers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Love you all. Until next time, you all have a wonderful day.